Hey y'all, it's Tasha from The Custom Gypsy. Um, I have had a lot of requests for a full tutorial on how I do this pink patina. Um, I'm really good at filming for TikTok. I'm really good at anything short, simple, and sweet, but long YouTube videos, this is gonna be a challenge for me. However, I'm all about helping people out, so y'all bear with me. I'm gonna give you a little voiceover while you just see a longer version of what you already seen on TikTok. So of course I'm starting off with a fully prepped tumbler. It is already sanded, washed, and I'm wiping it down with alcohol just before I get started painting so I notice a few water spots. Um, the paint that I use, this is what everyone keeps asking me, what is this paste, what is this paste? So the paste that I use, I take a combination of the Liquitex modeling paste and any acrylic paint. And let me go easy on the any. Um, right now I am using the Arteza paints and I've actually used some of the 50 cent paints from like Michaels and Hobby Lobby and it works really well. The only thing is, is this does lighten your color. So as you see, this cup right here is black, but it's got like of a gray tint to it. And that is because that paste has like that white color, which you should have seen that in the beginning of the video. So I'm gonna get back to these pastes in a minute and explain a little bit more, but I'm gonna explain to you how I started using these. Um, my original patina cup actually came from a tutorial I watched from Jessica Flynn. I think it was last year she came out with it. And she showcased these Art Extravaganza patina paste sets and they are awesome, really, really awesome. However, the only downside was they dried up extremely fast. Like the dark turquoise color was constantly dry and I was constantly having to buy it. Then of course they were always running out. So it was just like, ugh, what can I do? So I started researching and came across this modeling paste and said, well, let's just see how it turns out. Tried it out and boom, if you look really close, you see the texture that it gives. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't really measured too much. I just kind of eyeball it, mix it to the consistency that I like. And if you have some jars, you can save if you mix too much, you just put it in a jar and put it to the side, which is really awesome. This paint does dry like extremely hard and I guess I would call it more of a paste, but it drives extremely concrete, solid, um, and if you just pay attention, you see the texture. Now, this pink down here, it is the same thing. It is an acrylic paint and the modeling paste mix, and I also put just a hint of a hot pink mica powder in there just to brighten up my paint a little bit because it was a little dull. So, you're going to see me going back and forth. There's no rhyme or reason to this, you guys. Like, I picked a brush. I wanted texture and I just started putting it on there. Like, you know, you want to stroke it. You want that brush stroke look. That's really popular right now. So that's what I was going for. Um, the pink is a paste. I think I already said that. So the paste is kind of building up, giving me just a little bit of extra texture. I can tell you that I absolutely love this technique. I love the way it looks. I love the texture to it. Um, I love being able to see the fine lines and it's really going to make this gold just go on like spread like butter like it is perfect boom fan brush and look at there now i have a habit of going a little bit too heavy-handed on gold because i feel like everything should sparkle so if you don't want to use as much gold you definitely don't have to this is just kind of what i put together for this particular customer and she gave me free reign just gave me some colors and this is what i came up with as for this gold right here I'm using, that is out of the Art Extravaganza kit. I have played around with mixing some metallic golds with the modeling paste. That really didn't give me the look I wanted. Um, I also got a matte thickening medium. Um, it didn't give the luster, like, so to speak, that I wanted. So I'm still playing with some more mediums so I can make my own uh, paste for the golds or the silvers and change it up a little bit. But this right here is the Art Extravaganza paste. So I got my gold paste laid down. Now we're gonna do some gold glitter. For my gold glitter, I have some adhesive from Britches and Bows, and I just put it on there with my fan brush again. Right here, I wasn't too happy, so I switched to another side and tried to brush it on a little bit more, and boom, you're gonna watch me just throw it on there. Again, guys, there is no rhyme or reason to this. I literally just did the best I could with this cup to give my client exactly what they were looking for, and to have fun with it and give you guys something new um, to play with. So I got the gold in there, I got the glitter on there, and it still wasn't enough because <laughs> everything needs to sparkle. So we're gonna add a little bit more glitter. Then I'm gonna move into the foils. Once I get into the foils, it's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna use that same glue that I used for my glitter. I'm gonna use the same glue for the foils. And the way I put it on for the foils is I just put it on there with either the applicator, my finger, a eyeshadow brush, just whatever works depending on how I want the foils to lay. 
I've also seen a technique where I see a lot of people using a needle applicator to add glitter to a brush stroke tumbler. And I think that's pretty awesome. I haven't tried that yet. I'm going to definitely have to try that one out. I've just been using a fan brush. So definitely if you want to try it out that way, be my guest. Again, this is just how I do it. And I'll say this in every video I ever make probably is this is what works for me. This is what I sat down and did and said, you know what, Tasha, you can do this with no problem. So you guys feel free to take what I've done and what someone else has done, tweak it, make it your own method and put out the best work you can do because that's just the best advice I can give you, period. But on to these foils. Um, I put a little bit of glue on and then I pack this foil on. These foils, I got those from Britches and Bows as well. Um, this rose gold bronze looking one, it is my favorite. Absolutely love it. I do not use it enough, but I have a feeling that's going to change because everyone has fell in love with this cup, which is great. So anyhow, I put my glue on there. I let it dry a little bit and then I load it down with the foils and then I just brush it off. Um, you're going to see me go through 50 different things picking up this foil, whether it's my fingers, the silicone brush, I have the crystal ninja thing, like so many tools. I just grab whatever's in front of me because look, it's going to look the way I want it to look by the time I'm done with it, regardless of what tool I use. And that is the most important thing that I think I have to tell myself when I'm working. So anyway, with these foils, I just brush them off, pat them down, rub off the excess until, again, favorite phrase, it's where I want it to be and it looks the way I want it to look. Like, guys, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. You're going to look at your product and you're going to be able to say that's enough or that's too much. I'm just going to give you a little reference of what I use and how I use it. Um, so the foils are done, the paste is done, the glitter is done. All that's left is the epoxy. So once I got all my foils laid the way I want them, um, and I added a lot of foil to this one, so it's kind of a lot being shown. Um, I'll go in, I'll let it dry, and then I go right over it with counterculture fast set epoxy. Um, I do not seal this with anything. I just go. If the glitter moves a little bit, I'm okay with that because it's not kind of, it's, I guess it's more organic if it moves. I don't really know how another way to explain it, but it doesn't bother me. So I just go on in with the epoxy, put it on there and boom, look at that girl shine. Absolutely love it. I was a little hesitant on this cup, but you guys made me feel like a rock star. So I said, Hey, let me give these people what they want and show them how I did it. Like I'm absolutely so humbled that you guys wanted to see my method. And I really hope this tutorial didn't let you down. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out and ask I will answer as many questions as I can. Um, again, the star of this show is the Liquitex Acrylic Medium Modeling Paste. It is the bomb. I see a lot of people trying to sell you this for ridiculous prices. Go get some acrylic paint, get your modeling paste, mix your own, and just patina the world. You will not be disappointed. Thank you guys again so much for following me on TikTok, for supporting my business, and supporting my work. And Again, I hope this video was what you guys were looking for, and I can't wait to see all the cups that you guys make when you're finished with this. Make sure you tag me so I can see how everything turned out.